Kingdom Minded Ministries. It's Pastor Jimmy K. Rogers here with you with the one and only Lamar Campbell. It is such a privilege and an honor to have you here. It's great to be here with you. And uh, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, tell us about your life. I've been listening to your music for such a long time. We want to know a little bit more about you and, and what you're doing and what you've done and where you're going with what the Lord has placed on your life. Well, that's great. Um, I'll start off by saying I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Mm -hmm. I've only lived one other place. I lived in Houston, Texas for about five years. Okay. And I really enjoyed uh, being a part of the Windsor Village ministry there with uh, Kathy Taylor and Pastor Kirby John Caldwell. And um, I, I started off from a, a very early age. Um, I would like to say, I, I would like to say I probably... I know that I started playing for my first church at age 15. Okay. say that I really started because that's when I was receiving a, um, a little yellow envelope. Y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> so that really pushed you to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that little yellow envelope with uh, $15 in it for service and $15 if I went to rehearsal. Okay. So, I mean, God has really brought us a long way. Um, my parents... Um, I grew up, um, my parents were, especially my mom, were, were very church-minded. And I, I, I like to say if uh, um, we, we went to church so much, uh, we went to church to see if they were having church. Lord of mercy. <laughs> so if that's they all, weren't, we would be there. <laughs> that's all the fun we had was church, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, um, and one, I can remember one time that my aunt, um, bought a new piano for her, for her, she was turning part of her house into a church. Okay. And so she bought a piano and um, invited me to come over to play. So everybody's going to see if I can play. So okay, I, okay, okay. So I sat down and I actually, I really, I just started playing and I pl started playing in a way that it got to a point where people were just asking for requests and I would start playing whatever they were. Do you remember what were some of the requests? Uh, back then they were like, oh God, uh, uh, James Cleveland gospel songs, okay. you know. Did you play and, them? Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I played them. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, as far as I remember, I remember, I remember them singing along. So they had to be, I had to be playing them good enough for them to sing along. Right. And uh, um, and I, as far back as I remember, I always felt that God was going to use me in some way to impact the world. Thank you, Lord. But I didn't, I hadn't pinpointed it to music or anything like that. I just, I walked around as a young kid, just believing that God was going to use me to impact the world some kind of wow. way. And I was good with that. And I didn't 
feel any kind of way. Yeah. You know, it's so I think that's why um, I didn't make my uh, siblings or um, my uh, peers or at that time playmates feel some kind of way because mm -hmm. I didn't feel it any kind of way I j it was just a part of who I knew that I was and I didn't even know how it was going to happen okay so there was no reason for me to you know feel some kind of way about it mm -hmm. but um all these years later I'm just so thankful that um that you know I can testify that you know, God can use you as a child to make an impact. Yes. You know, as a matter of fact, he came to this earth to, to show us that, you know, a, a child will lead the way. Yeah. So, um, man, it's, it's been, it, my life, to say the least, has been, been very exciting and full of ministry all the way through. Wow. So you mean to tell me that God can use children too? Oh man, well I, I'm a living witness of that. You right, know? right. If it were not so, I would not have told. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Jesus was in the temple at at the age of twelve. They tell us right, and he was ministering to the the Sadducees and the Pharisees. A lot of people were amazed at the anointing that was on his life. Right. Absolutely, and uh, and on purpose. I believe he did that on purpose. Okay. Because you know uh, he could have chosen to come come to the earth as an adult he could have yeah. you know he, he didn't have to come the way that he can he could have picked any kind of way anyway to come to this earth but i think it was something very special about him wanting to um uh come as a child and to show us the way that you know that that we don't have to especially children you don't have to wait to you older and yeah. to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. And, and there's things that we can do um, at children can do at a young age. Yes. I mean, I've, you know, over this pandemic, I've been inspired over some of the uh, prayers I've heard some children pray yeah. online and, yes. and different ways that they've um, encouraged people um, during the COVID-19 thing. Yeah. God is using these young kids. Yes, it's he so, is. So, so I've I've seen seen going from 15 up until you started to really get in to the swing of things concerning ministry, what age was that? Um, well, I did, I, I had another group and, um, and I did a recording, um, I, in my early 20s okay. and that cd was that cd was called ready and the name of that group was lamar campbell and praise yeah and um uh, song that was um kind of kind of did relatively well on okay. that project was uh this debt of love i owe okay uh that cd was released in 1989 okay so the very first ready yeah the very yeah that's Lamar Campbell and praise. And, and the story behind that is, you know, the Lord blessed me to do that. I, I really aspired to be a gospel artist. And uh, I just knew I was going to be the next Walter Hawkins. I just knew it. <laughs> okay, when, okay. I was already prepared to Come on. grow my hair longer and get, you know, get the, I was ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when uh, when it came out, um, it just it just did my it did great. Okay. But it I I had already picked out my outfit to wear to the Grammys. <laughs> and it did not it didn't do Grammy great. <laughs> but um and and I appreciate that uh, humble beginning because yeah. God always gave me a vision for great things. Mm. 
My God. And uh, really, quite honestly, after I didn't go to the Grammys on that first record, I was like, okay, well then, you know, I ain't doing this. Wow. I was going to lay back. I'll be the background. I'll play keyboards. You know, um, Al, uh, a good friend of mine, Al Hobbs, uh, yeah. Al the Big Hobbs from, yeah. from Indianapolis, who's, so. who's over the radio uh, gospel. And now he kept encouraging me to do to write songs for different projects okay. and you know, a lot of workshop projects. And and um, so I did that and I was very cool with that. Um, he got me involved in the recording part. I, I um, directed a, a number of uh, re recordings okay. um, for, um, for some artists. And so I was all set into being that Behind the scenes, guy. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I was really good with it, but, but um, it's not what God showed you, is it? It's not what God showed me, but it was a part of my process, and um, oh. it was, it was interesting how God would put me in specific uh, um, situations yeah. that ultimately prepared me for the open door oh my god when the door opened i had so many things under my belt that i didn't have to try to scramble and try to learn and try yeah. to and so many contacts so many people that that uh he put in my path that would be able to be a blessing and encourage my ministry along as it was growing and you know that's just that's just God's way. Amazing. Yeah, when when we uh, position ourselves to be able to hear from him and position ourselves to um, be obedient to what sure. we hear. Sure. You know, we do a lot of praying, but, you know, there's a part where we have to listen to see and, how he And goes. obey, yeah. Yeah, and don't forget, yeah, the most important, and obey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen and obey. It is phenomenal to me that you had an ideal in your mind of how you thought it was going to be. God has already showed you a vision. You had a desire to do it. And you had your mind set on how you thought it would be. And God said, no, I'm not ready for that just yet because you might not be able to handle that. Give, let me give you this. Let me give you a, a step through it. And I love that God humbled you in the beginning because has that, I'm gonna ask you a question. Has that humility been with you for the rest of your ministry? Was that a learning lesson for you? You. Well, this is this is what I like to say. Um, humility. I, I've always people all along the way have always said we like Lamar because he's so humble. He, 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 Lamar is so humble. He's so humble. Wow, wow. But I would hear that and I'd be like, God. <laughs> You they, know my thoughts. <laughs> but say if they only knew, huh? <laughs> you know my inner parts. You know everything <laughs> about me. And that you would have people to perceive that, perceive something that I will eventually walk in okay. uh, um, wholeheartedly. Sure. That is That was amazing to me. Yeah. So I always... I, the, all, all through the process, I always prayed for humility. I always embraced criticism. Like even as a kid, you know, okay. when you didn't do the, you know, the mothers at the church, you know, you don't need to do this and you right. don't need to do that. And, you know, and, and they don't always say it in the, the kindest way sometimes, but they say it in a way where you, the way you need to hear it. Yeah. And when I look back at all of those things, they, all of those things and all of the people that God put in my uh, uh, path mm -hmm. to say the hard things to me that I didn't want to, uh, to hear so sure. at that time I'm so thankful for every it's it's really those things that really help build wow. my ca character wow. you know, so sometimes we're, we're just going we're just going fishing for the big fish and when we can't catch the big fish we just you know we throw everything else back but sometimes you know the little fish that we catch 
yeah. lead to catching the bigger fish. So we need to, you know, we need to give everything along the way its value yeah. instead of say, because it didn't get me here, yeah. I'm going to throw it away. No, mm. it may have just gotten you here. Yeah. <laughs> and but, that's a step above there. So, you know. I like that. It's a step above there. It's a, it's a step above where you thought you would be. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So the Bible says that we see in part and we know in part. We see through a glass darkly. It was not that it was not coming. It was just not yet. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes do we have to hold on to God's not yet until that comes? Yes, we do. We have, and, and we have to keep believing in the, in the midst of it not looking like we think it should look. And sometimes we want to throw in the towel when it's like, well, you know, my idea of what this was going to look like, you know, it, it, this ain't happening. And really this morning, man, God was really dealing with me about um, being enough and um, dealing with me uh, on the issues of trying to pursue something that really is somebody was intended for somebody else or is somebody else wow. and that God has given us everything that we need to accomplish the things that we're supposed to accomplish and when we spend our time feeling that what where we are right now doesn't look like somebody else mm -hmm. we give up on what God put on in us and we don't spend well, let me say it this way we don't invest the time in the raw gift in the raw talent that god has given us that he wants to to make us unique and beautiful and 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 when we understand who we are in him yeah. and we embrace who god made us that's when other people pay attention you know what? You're getting ready to. I'm telling you, this is phenomenal. Somebody needs to hear this out there because so much, so many people, and uh, they're spending so much time trying to be like somebody else. They have no power in that area. They have no anointing in that area, and they're wasting time. If they would just, so what I'm hearing you say is, if they would just do what God has created their hands to do, is spend time working on their own anointing that God has placed in. Lord absolutely, absolutely, man. <laughs> it, it, took me, it took me out this morning. So wow. <laughs> but so I'm flesh, say this. flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. Oh no, no. And, and all glory goes to God. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you know, we see so many uh we see so many powerhouses in ministry. Yeah. And sometimes we deserve to be the powerhouse. Mm. But do you know that um Power comes in all all types of vessels. Absolutely, you know, uh, a powerhouse, um, somebody that that sometimes we deem as a powerhouse that can come in and wreck a house. Yeah. Um, um, for you to say that's what that's the only way a powerhouse uh, looks mm -hmm. and it or can operate or can operate. And and I can operate, thank you. And and ignore the testimony that God has used give given you yeah. that He can use to save somebody's life that's going through, that He can give you to keep somebody from throwing in the towel when they really wanted to. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we we need to stop trying to put levels on what God can do because He didn't do that. He didn't give us levels of, you know, he gave, he told us what's av what is available to us. Our job is to access it, wow. you know. So if somebody's not accessing it, it doesn't mean that it's not available to you. You, you didn't plug in any, to access it. So when we really understand what God has called us to do, we'll yeah. spend the rest of our lives trying to access it because we know it's already ours. Or, or, or we're trying to obtain something that doesn't belong to us and God said, I didn't create that for you. It's a waste. It's a waste of time. 
Wow. It's a waste of time. If we could get back all the time that we spent trying to be like somebody else Come on. and invest that time into uh, 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 what God really created us to be, oh my God, we would have so many giants walking around here. Yeah. It's like a secret, but it's not a secret. You have access to it, but you you haven't tapped into it. And and it, it, people so let, say, let like, me let like, me ask you a question. How did you tap into it? Well, um, I it's it's been a process. I. I mean, after this morning's visitation, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm further advanced than I was yesterday. So pause just for one second. I just got to pause because because the Holy Spirit is, I, I'm a real pastor. Yeah, I pastor a church, but I feel the anointing to say this to you. So in the beginning, you were telling me about the process. Help me with this process. Well, the process is, the process is really, you can't, you can't expect other people to, the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. You want your neighbor to love somebody that you don't love. Okay. You look in the mirror that you don't like. Okay. You look in the mirror and you say, you are not good enough. But when you start loving who you are. The more you love who you are, the more you love who God made you, yeah. the more you're going to shine. And the more that you, and that has really been part of the, the, the process for me. Um, getting closer to knowing who God made me and being satisfied with that and being happy with that. Because, you know, I, I've been on stages and, and and headline concerts that, and I'm sitting up in my dressing room, mm -hmm. and I'm hearing people going forth, ripping the house. Uh, uh, you know, okay. it's like, is it gonna be anything left? Right, 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 right. And I'm sitting up in my dressing room, thinking like, God, why do why do I put myself in this situation? <laughs> what, what, why am I here? You know, yeah, they yeah. don't need me. Yeah. You know. And then he reminds me that there, there is something that I gave you that uh, other people are not doing. And yes. if you don't do it, mm. then it won't happen. Wow. So, uh, and every time God shows himself, My you know, and, and I can't see it even minutes before it happens, but yeah. when, but once you're in that space, I mean, it, it's so clear. So, Man. When, when the glory falls, it's, it's a done deal. When the deal. glory falls, but when see, the it, glory it, it, falls. But but there has to, it has to be systematic. It has to be in line with God's will. When you identify who you are and you're comfortable in the anointing that God has given you, and you have rested in not trying to be like anybody else, but you are you. Does it all work together for the good? It all works together for the good. It all works together for the good. So. So now I don't sit in my dressing room wondering why uh, this person seems like that is is opening up for me because no I don't sing like that but no they don't have what God gave me and it's not to say that it's you know that I'm superior it's not to sure. say that it's superior but it is uh, an assignment it's an assignment, and I and, and I've been saying this really a, a lot lately. That uh, if if we are able to be a blessing to the people that God assigned to us, my God, you know, when we leave this earth, that, I mean that that that's a uh, that's a well done right there. Wow! <laughs> yeah. If you're and, faithful to the people that God have assigned to you, that's a well done. Somebody yes. needs to hear that today. And, and let's take it a little further. Okay. If I spend my time trying to uh, be a blessing to the people that were assigned to you, mm. then 
who's going to be a blessing to the people that I was assigned to? Yeah. So we're leaving somebody uncovered while we're trying to cover somebody else. So it's important that we tap into uh, our assignment and, and who we're supposed to bless and, and, and how God wants to use us to be a blessing you know, there's, there's, we don't know their names, we don't know their faces, sure. but we know they're out there. And the, the, the whole part of even releasing this new mu this, this new project yeah. is, is tapping into, you know, even though I just, in my spirit, you know, when I moved back to um, Indianapolis. To, to hang out with my parents because they're older. My mom's going through the uh, first stages of of dementia. And 10 years later, they're still with me. They're 84, they're 85. Mm -hmm. Got, you know, I, I'm so that that's, a, that, you know. Brother Campbell, I, would you call their names for me, please? Just call their names. I will. Geneva Campbell and Miller Campbell. Amen. My parents. Amen. And when they come to uh, and when they come to concerts, they're not able to do that so much anymore, especially the past few years. Sure. But I always uh, they're known to everybody as Mama and them. All so right, all right, they, all right. And I always tell them, tell my mom to do that wave I showed her. You know, I said to my parents, <laughs> do do the wave we showed. Right, right. And they said, I'm very proud of my parents. I'm, you know, I I'm um, I really uh, enjoyed stepping back a little bit to be with my parents because I feel like I've been doing ministry all of my life, you know, to people that I don't even know their name sure. and stuff. And there, there's got there's a ministry to our family that we, right. we don't want to ignore. That's right. Honor your mother and father. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So it's, so it's going to be a blessing. I told somebody the other day that I was uh, uh, my parents, uh, the, the thing I love about my parents is on the release date of my CD, uh, my dad texts me to say, can you go pick up so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so from the grocery store? <laughs> and you did it, did you? Oh, you yeah, and I got busy getting ready to go to the grocery store. <laughs> and, I said, and people want to know how I stay grounded. So <laughs> right. I honor my parents. <laughs> so, so my dad is ninety. I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. And I don't care nothing about no release date. Go to the store and get me so, 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 they better, so, so. and they better be back on time too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I love it too. I love it. I love it. I uh, love it. Tell us about this new project that you have coming out. Well, this this project, um, and I, I really like telling the testimony about this um, because. This project came at a time when I didn't, you know, I was questioning if I would even find the space to be able to do an, uh, another project. I knew, I know, I don't want to say I knew, I know God has more in me. Okay. But I couldn't figure out how it, how to do it, how, how it's supposed to be done how i was gonna have time to pull away okay. and get in that space to be able to do it the zone wouldn't it be just like god to allow a, a pandemic <laughs> in the midst of me trying to figure out how i'm gonna be able to manage doing he, something he's gonna like make you do it yeah now i didn't say he caused the pandemic i said he allowed them yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and during that time I did some soul searching because I want to, you know, while we have this time, first of all, the first couple of weeks I would, I tried to sleep them away. You know, I was just exhausted. I think we all it was, did. It was just the first quarter and this year came in so weird. It's just like, it, we, it, it felt just like, 2019 it did normally you feel like a shift from absolutely 2019 to 
one year to the next, right. it just felt like it was a continuation. <laughs> I was like, so how am I tired already? <laughs> so, um, and it's just January. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and so uh, when, when uh, so I, I kind of relaxed after, for, for the first week, I, I, I was out the first weekend of the pandemic. Lord bless me to make it back. And it was when he did, he talked to me real simple. It's like, uh, there's a song you have that's uh, called He's More Than That. Do a, do a YouTube video on that. I'm like, okay, well, we, how am I going to do that? So, but I said, we'll, we'll do it. We'll figure it out. We, we can do that. So I did a YouTube tube video yeah. of He's More Than That. And we were able to do it. I got a little Caribbean uh, sound to it. A little Caribbean thing and a a little infectious vamp on the end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And um, he said, if you do this song, it's going to bless so many people because the message of this song and really the whole project is to remind people while we're so focused on COVID 19, while we're so focused on um, the pol- police killings and, and, and all of the crime and the killings in our own community. Yes. While we're so focused on that, can you can you remember that I, I'm more than that, I can handle all of that? Can you, can, can you, can you remember that? Awesome. And so that's really what this song is to, to remind people that God is, you know, it, more not than saying that. that it's not, yeah, it's not, you're not going through a great trial or great problems or great illness or it's not saying that, but don't forget don't why forget. you're going through this thing. You've got somebody that's got your back and can and can pull you out of this wow. thing and can pull you through this thing. So we were obedient to, to doing doing the video. And then he said, well, you know, don't stop there. I mean, just put it out, you know, go ahead and uh, do a radio single. I'm like, okay. So you know, we got to find money for that. We got to do what, you know. Yeah, we yeah. Do. So I said, we've done that. Okay. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, G. <laughs> and then, uh, he, then he said, well, just go ahead and do a, a project. I, you know, I want to direct you to, to a collection of songs that are going to help some people during this okay. period of time. Okay. That, um, you know, they are... You recorded over a hundred songs in the last couple of decades. And, Come on, you know there's some songs that are deep down in there because you've had some strong, really strong songs that people missed. Sure. And, and so I want you to put the, uh, a collection of songs together and release it as a project, and I want you to do it now. So, 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 so tell us the title of the song, the CD, and tell us. How you came up with the title? Well, the the song, the title of the CD is "He's More Than That," the B side. Okay. And and I really got got so stuck on the B sides, and I was like, the B sides. So, for those who know anything about music, uh, vintage music, I'll put yes. it that way. So this is so it didn't sound like I'm so old. <laughs> Vintage, okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, back in the day, you'd have a, a forty-five. A side. Yeah, forty-five. You have an A side and the B side. Yeah. And you you go you buy the forty-five for the song that they were playing on the radio. Right. And then you'd be like, okay, I, I got that song. And then after you played that song for a while, then you flip it over to the B side and then you start listening to the B side and that's the song you said, oh man, that's my right. jam. Right, right, right. I've been listening to the A side all this time and then uh, there's a whole nother, there's a whole new life on the B side. Mm-hmm. Another so level. This is, this is really what this project is about. And I'm thankful that God has given us classic, timeless, music yes and actually i want to uh take a minute to encourage somebody right here okay. that uh, we're in a period of chasing trends right now mm. and god wants some people in this time period to go a little deeper mm. and create 
music that's going to be timeless, that's going to be around for years and years to come. So um, don't be so complacent. And, and I, I appreciate the music. And, you know, I did, I'm, this is not shade to anything that's happening right now. But I hope I'm speaking to somebody that God has given a deep well to. Mm. You will hear this and that you will begin to know that God gave you some deep things that you are supposed to put out and not just do trendy stuff because we're going to need classic stuff all along the way. Yeah. So um, I'm grateful. I hope that encouraged somebody, but I'm grateful that God um, gave me music that I'm able to release now that I mean, people are really embracing it and talking about how great they, how the music is ministering to them. And I'm just, I'm humbled and I'm so thankful that I listen because, you know, if I didn't, you know, I would have, I would have caused death Mm. to a whole catalog of music because I wasn't obedient to what he told me to do to be able to give this testimony. So really the, the project is more about obedience and being able to show people what it, obedience looks like because this whole project from the beginning to being released mm -hmm on July the uh, 24th was all done in a month's time. Wow. wow. In a pandemic. Wow. So, I mean, God gave me all the people to contact and, and then, you know, people like yourself have reached out to me, you know, Amen. and uh, allowed me a platform to be able to talk about it. So I thank you know, God for you for giving us an opportunity to share uh, and, and to, to share your story and your testimony with the world. This is absolutely phenomenal. So we thank, thank God for you. Thank you so much, man. How does it feel to be in ministry, LC and SOP, for 20 years? Oh, but no, I'm just teasing. No, it, <laughs> man, it's, it, it's um, I mean, you have to know that we started off with some people that are not around anymore. You have to know that uh, uh, after 20 Absolutely. years. Absolutely. And that God would find favor. I'm trying not to tear myself up. <laughs> but that God would find favor in us and allow us to be around all these years later and have relevance and still have a voice and still have songs that are at the top of people's pandemic listening list playlist yeah yeah it's yeah it's 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 really it's really amazing and it's it's of no goodness of our own it's just god's favor <laughs>
everything right. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a God of forgiveness. He's a God that will, um, he, he put in his word allowances for us to mess up. Oh, really? But okay, thank you. Thank he you. put in his word, you know. <laughs> and, and, and then, you know, all, we got to confess him and, and you know. And, and he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. Yeah, it's, a, it's all in there. So oh, we, thank you. Yeah, a, oh, that's a thank you right there. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah so, um, I mean, it's amazing. And it has really opened up my eyes. And, and even as an artist, all these years, sometimes it feels like, or it has seemed along the way that uh, a, a top gospel artist looks a certain way. Okay. And um, I've learned that that's not true. You know, it's not, it's not true. Wow. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's about walking in your calling. Mm -hmm. So if, if God called you to be one of the ones that's, that's always on, on television, that's always doing the, the big tours, and that's always at the top of the charge. If okay. God called you to do that, that's absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. But for us to think that that's the only way mm. ministry looks is, is just not. Or the pinnacle of ministry, or that's yeah. all that there is to it. Right, right, absolutely. Oh, wow. it's, it's not true. And I'm here to tell people that story too. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So over the last 20 years, you've had musical influences. Of course, we've talked about the, Walt, the Walter Hawkins and the family, Edwin Hawkins and various others. Uh, would you give me some of your musical influences? Yeah, um, I, um, I will say Thomas Whitfield. The maestro. The maestro. Yeah. Richard Smallwood. Um, Big fan of the Winans, big fan of the Clark Six Sisters. And as a matter of fact, uh, I'd like to say that the, the Clark Sisters really, as we celebrate them during this time, the, the yeah. whole world is celebrating. The whole world. And they de deservingly so. Sure. But, um, this is an accolade that I would like to give them in my interview today. Okay, yes, go ahead. And I would like to say the reason why I'm doing gospel music today is because of the Clark sisters. Wow. Um, the, there was a song, um, Expect a Miracle, Looking for a Miracle. Yeah. I, when that first came out, I loved that song. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. And yeah. I was like, but you know, I'm working with all these choirs. How do I pull that off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, um, I formed a little group just to do that song. To pay them homage, huh? <laughs> yeah, right, just to do that song. And so it was a group out of the choir and everywhere the choir went, they wanted the group to sing. And I said, well, maybe we need to start learning some more songs since they keep hey, wanting to sing. Let me see if you can give us the lyrics to that, just a couple of them. Let me see if you can remember some of the lyrics to that song. To Expect a Miracle? Yeah, let me hear you, if you remember them. Oh, Lord. I don't, I remember them all, but if I say them in order, that will be it. <laughs> I'm looking for a miracle. Okay. I expect the impossible. I see the invisible. I feel the intangible. I see the invisible. Come on. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> the sky is the limit to what I can have. What I can have. Just My believe God. God will perform it today. Yeah. And then the, the thing that you just got to work and work and work until they don't work no right, more. Right, right, right. I expect a miracle every day. Every day. And then God I do, will make a way. Yeah, yeah. And I do a, a little vamp on it uh, at church, actually. We do. I'm a minister of music of Mount Carmel Church in Indianapolis. Praise God. And we just work that believe and receive it. And we can work that for about five or 10 minutes. Right, right. Until it gets down in the shondo, down in the yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> yes, sir. I've, I've enjoyed this. It's been so good. I, I like that song, uh, 
uh, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark sang with the with the Clark sisters, and she was she, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. That's one of my favorite songs, and so I see your roots in gospel, and so the anointing has always been there. Follow the anointing. Follow the anointing. Will it ever lead you wrong? Will the anointing ever? Not lead the you anointing. Wrong? Thank the God for the anointing. Thank God for the anointing. Yeah. My God. And the anointed ones. Oh. So you the ones signifying that there may be some that are not anointed. They have good uh you know, good presence, good stage presence, and you know, they can draw a crowd, but there's no anointing. And we know that the anointing destroys the yoke, right? Absolutely. And and uh we'll see the fruits of that. Mm. You'll see what it produces, you know, not saying that you won't be able to, to fill up the uh, the stadium, but the fruits would be different. So when you say fruit, you're talking about lives changed, bodies healed, Absolutely. depression delivered, breakthroughs. Absolutely. Absolutely. The testimonies will come back. Um, uh, talent will allow you to go to a concert and feel good and um, wow. tell you um, what your favorite song is and how, how great, you know, they performed it. That's what talent will do. Okay. And it'll give you some good feelings. <laughs> but, when, uh, but, but the anointing yeah. will bring things back to your remembrance in the time when you need it the most. Come on, man. I got to share this one testimony. Come on and share it. This is I good to me. One testimony. <laughs> and this, and, and I, I consider uh, it a blessing that God allows me to be able to hear testimonies in during a period of time that they really encourage my life. Okay. And uh, I remember when we did our first CD and uh, with Spirit of Praise, Lamar Campbell's Spirit of Praise. All right. And um, that's that's the CD that had He Won't Let You Down. He yeah. I just did. And um, there was a, a lady, a Caucasian lady, that was there at the um, CD release because we did it in the mall at okay. the uh, Sam Goody uh, uh, record store in the mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And Goody got it, yeah. <laughs> if you remember that. Yeah. But, um, so she um, she was there, she bought the CD. And then we did the next record, um, uh, what was the name? I think it was, it's, it's the record that has All About the Love on it. Mm -hmm. I Need Your Spirit was the name of the second record. And um, so she came. And, she and the remix, don't forget about I Got the Love remix part. Two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she came and she pressed her way. She pressed her way through the crowd. Okay. And she came up to me and she said, I had to let you, I had to be here when, when we went to the same mall. We did the same CD release thing okay. at the second yeah. uh, thing. So she came, uh, she said, I had to press my way through the crowd because um, I wanted to let you know that when I went, to, came to your first concert in uh, in the mall and I got that CD, I was homeless and me and my family was living in a car. I wanted to let you know that through listening to that CD every day, um, I am a homeowner, I am a registered nurse, and I, uh, that CD blessed me and helped me go, go through the most terrible time of my life. And that's why we do gospel music, yeah. for testimonies like that. When we think about this new project, what are you looking for God to do through it for the people of God? Well, thank God he's already starting to do it. Sure. But um, what we are expecting uh, is that what we're we're expecting is God to use this project in an unusual way to help people during this time that we're living, these uncertain times that we're living, these uh, these challenging times, we're asking God to to help uh, use this music. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Lamar Campbell and 
spirit of praise has been committed every day and we've been doing this for the last two weeks okay. every day at noon to uh, pray for God to use our music to be a source of refuge when wow. people hear it for people to be encouraged and people to be uplifted wow what music this time. yeah so um even while we're not able to do concerts we're not able to do all this stuff but we're praying that God will use the music to do that for people. And um, and the reason why it's important to us because it just brings us back to how we started. God called us to do music that helps put people in relationship. Glory. And of course the enemy wants to block that, mm -hmm. but um, God is the greatest power, so he wins. Come on, come on. T tell me out of the, the years of ministry and the, the, the songs that the Lord has allowed you to put out, what are some of your favorites? Give me five of your favorite songs that have ministered to you, if that's even possible to do. Okay, okay. well, you know, these five will be different today than the five will be tomorrow and the five were yesterday. Right, right, right. Um, but um, I would say uh closer would be one um the the hook um the hook line of that song today i want to be closer to you than i've ever been before yeah um uh i really am grateful is one mm -hmm. uh because the, the way god had me write that song was um was i he had me write it from a, pers a perspective that wasn't so good, okay. but it always reminded me of a promise mm. that God, God has kept or is able to keep. And um, of course, more than anything, you know, we got, we, you know, yeah. um, I think that's, that's a staple song. That that's I, a staple song yeah. right there. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. And um, you know, I know some songs, we won't be singing in heaven because God's going to give us new songs yeah. to sing when we get there. But I got a sneaky suspicion that that might, <laughs> might be when they make it on over there to, on that heavenly playlist. So I got to pause. I got to pause you just for a second right there because that more than enough, it hit like a pandemic. It hit like a, a virus. It hit like because everybody was singing that song. It became the anthem for so many years. And I believe that even right now, it's still, it's a timeless piece. It's a timeless song that people still minister. Have you heard a lot of requests for that song over the years of ministry? It's a, it's a blessing because um, in some ways, it seems like it's more popular now yes. than, um, than even 20 years ago. And that song in particular made us uh, known for being a trailblazer for choirs doing worship music. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because, you know, choirs are known for doing a lot of church music. Sure. But, um, you know, so I'm thankful for that song and, and I'm thankful for um, the power that God put on, on the, the anointing on, on that recording. Yeah. And, how God uses uh, the even from the intro, it's just there's an anointing that yes. you know even when you hear the intro to the song, it's just He uses it to shift atmospheres. And I don't know of any, I don't know in, too many artists that don't use it or have not used it at some time or another sure. as a part of their. Uh, um, a concert series or whatever. So, and then the fact that people, are, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, it was on um, Sunday's Sunday Best. Yeah, yeah. And um, even as that contestant uh, who did a great job ministering it, but um, as I was watching when the intro started, I, I saw people already going in worship. And yeah. it, I mean, 
it's it's, it's, it's oh, rich. It's it's the anointing, the anointing. Yeah, is. It's, yeah it's, I mean, how, how do you explain that? I yeah. mean, how do you try to? Yeah, it's it's all God. You know, I, I think I think because of what you encounter when you started off, you know, you know, that, that place of humility, that the Lord has so many great things in store for you that you could not even understand that it couldn't have happened right then. It couldn't have happened right then. The people were speaking your humility in existence and, and now you see yourself. Well, they spoke it, yeah, they spoke it into existence. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> So, so 20 years later, those songs are ministering to you and they're being a part of the anthem of the world. How does it feel to be Man. used of God in this season? Man, it feels really great. And, 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 and I tell you, actually, it feels really awesome, but it makes me want to deep, dig deeper. It makes me want to dig deeper. Um, certainly I'm not in any type of competition sure. of what God has already done, you know, but it just wants, it makes me want to make sure that if he wants to do something else amazing through me, that I, I am available and prepared to, uh, to be able to make that contribution to the glory of God. Thank you so much for this time. I thank God for your humility. I thank God that you had to learn a lesson and there was a part of the process. I thank God for your sustaining music. It's still applicable to this day. That's when you know it's rich. That's when you know it's classic, that it can be played through a pandemic and people will still be affected by the anointing that God placed in your life. Again, thank you for sharing with our audience today. Can you give us some information on how to reach your music? Can we go to your website? Can we reach you on Facebook or social media tell us how to reach you it's really it's really easy to reach me if you if you can remember lamar campbell you can reach me on um facebook you can reach me on instagram my website is lamarcampbell.com you can reach me on twitter at lamar campbell one and um you know i love to i love to hear from you um if you go to my lamar campbell fan page on Facebook, I try to make sure that we have content up every day, every couple of days that uh, will strictly encourage you. You know, we don't, we don't talk about a lot of, you know, we just talk about encouraging good. things and uplifting um, people and, and scriptures and pointing people to to where the source of our strength, which yeah. is Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, you know, if you need an uplift, I dare you to stop by that page. So I like I like what you said. There's two things that that you said that were that was so profound and prolific. You said something about um the 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 competition and then you said this is not a page for, you know, just mess or in discouragement. This is a place for encouragement. Absolutely. And so I, I, I believe, first of all, that we're all on the same team. Those, well, I don't believe that we're all on the same team. I believe there are those that are, are part of the remnant that are on the same team. And there's no competition in God. We're supposed to be working together to build up the body of Christ, not to tear one another down. And so I don't think that that's in God. And then the second thing is that you said was so profound. You said, we're supposed, we're supposed to be encouraging one another. Is that right? 
Absolutely. Yeah. And I like uh, something about the way you said team, which, which stirred something in me. Um, we're on the same team. And the fact that we use the word team, that means that we play different positions. That's so good. So we're on the team and expecting everybody to be a pitcher or everybody to be a, a, catcher, a catcher or umpire. Right. Yeah, we, no, it doesn't work like that. So, you know, it goes back to embracing and, and sharpening who you really are meant to be. Because if you are really meant to be the pitcher and you spending all your time on on first base, come on, you know what a waste. Yeah, wow, what a waste. Thank you again for this opportunity. I appreciate you. Would you do me one last favor and pray for a young person out there? I like the way that we started this interview. A young person that has had their goal and their aspirations on one thing, and God is saying, not just yet. It's coming. Delay is not denial. Would you go ahead and pray for a young person out there? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for your great name and the power that's in your name. God, we love you so much. And we call on your great name because we know who you are and what you can do. Father, right now, we're praying on behalf of some young person who really loves you and has a gift that you've given them and has a desire, but they don't know how to make it a reality. God, we ask, ask that you would stir something up in them. Give them divine favor. God, place people in their way to be able to encourage them along the way. Place the tools and the people that are supposed to help them. Put them before them. And, and not only put them before them, help them to be able to identify them when you send them to them. God, we thank you for all the because we know you've given gifts to all of us. But God, we are, I'm praying right now that those of us who are who are more seasoned would find some young person to encourage. God, this world has so many things to offer them that could lead them down a, a wrong path. But God, you've called us to be a source of encouragement, a, 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 a well of knowledge to be able to to share with these young people. God, right now our heart really aches because of some of the direction that we see, God, but we know that when we call on your great name that you will hear us and somebody right now is being stirred up in the spirit, God, and we thank you in advance for what this prayer, how you're already um, sending this prayer forth how you're already using the words that we're saying right now yes. in the earth yes. to do heavenly things, oh God. We thank, thank you, Lord. And we just praise you for the power that we call on you, God. And we thank you for allowing us to be able to access you. God, we thank you and we praise you for all that you've done. And God, yes. and we, we stand in tiptoe anticipation on what you're going to do. God, we thank you for this uh, interview today. God, we ask a special blessing over this ministry, God, that you would allow it to come forth and do the purpose that you've called and intended it to do. God, we thank you and we just praise you and give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Hey, man, you have blessed me today. I thank God. This is just a treat. It was a blessing. And I pray that this interview blesses somebody today. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a blessed day. You too. Yeah.
Oh, let me 